Hello, beloved. I just want to keep encouraging until the time we see Jesus, hallelujah, coming in the sky with great power and glory. And um, chapter 6 of Hebrews, we started reading and um, we were talking about um, that uh, rain and we were talking about clouds. And it was funny because as, as I finished the video, I read chapter 6. And it talks a bit again about for the earth, which we were just talking about rain. And it says in verse seven, for the earth, which drinketh in the rain that cometh oft upon it and bringeth forth herbs meet for them by whom it is dressed, receiveth blessing from God. So, but that which beareth thorns and briars is rejected and is nigh unto cursing, whose end is to be burned. We're talking about things to be burned. And I talked about how the rain was falling on me. Praise the Lord. And we see that um, talks about the Son of God. They, they crucify him afresh whenever they keep going back. And I think that was one of the things that the devil has, has really come in and did in this end time was to put people in shame and back into their sin rather than walking in that righteousness that we are in Christ and being bold in this time, in time to give the gospel and to tell people to believe on, on the name of Jesus Christ. And instead, everyone in the church, well, not everybody, but a lot of them have been you know, weak in the faith or walking in fear because of the enemy's works. And we knew that he would do these things in the end because God warned us in the scriptures. So um, by the spirit, we see that the earth, which drinketh in the rain, you know, um, we have rain from heaven, from the clouds of heaven. And we know that ho God's holy angels rain on his church, too. We know about that. God's beautiful angels. Um, and they give us water from heaven. It says in the first uh, chapter of Revelation that the, the Lord um, Jesus from, gives the word of God to John through the angel so the word is like uh, washing us beloved and instructing us and giving us information about our enemies so that we know how to defeat the enemies you know and know their tactics because God does not make you ignorant of Satan's devices beloved he gives us full understanding in the scriptures by the spirit and so um, because we live by the spirit we see that we were talking about sister saying, you know, there's going to be a, a burning and we know in Adam all perish, all die and go into the grave. But in the last Adam, Jesus, his body, we go into the kingdom with the good shepherd. Hallelujah. Uh, the second death won't hurt us, it says in the scriptures. So right here we see that the earth which drinketh in the rain that cometh oft upon it. So the earth needs to receive the word and speak the word. And because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Okay. So they need the rain. They need the water from heaven. They need the wind because that's the word. Um, he talks about it like wind and rain. And then he even talks about it like fire. So to thoroughly purge his floor with fire, whose fan is in his hand. So he's going to purge, he's going to clean up his garden, the earth, our heart. It talks about that, you know, Christ walks in our heart. But he's going to clean up the earth of, of those that are earth dwellers. Also, he's going to keep raining on them until it produces faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. But those that are thorns and thistles, those in the scriptures, it says thorns and thistles are their, the heathens, gods, their uh, spirits of iniquity. You know, the spirit of iniquity is in them. They are the wicked, the children of the devil, the children of that wicked one. Um, we, they're rejected. God rejects them. So those things that are, that are bearing thorns and, and briars is rejected and nigh unto cursing whose end is to the, be burned. So for us, you see in the scripture that God brings a blessing to us, but to them, there is a curse on them. This wicked family who does evil in the world. And we see them from Gen from all the way from the beginning, the serpent in Genesis, cunning, subtle tactics. Now these cunning, subtle tactics, God has given me understanding these are people doing these cunning, subtle tactics, beloved, and they are subtle. Let me just tell you, um, but they're actually serpents. Okay. Jesus in Matthew 23 called them serpents. And in Ephesians six, we battle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. And we see Judas Iscariot was a demon. Jesus said, you know, I chose 12 of you and one of you is a devil. So the demon 
um, that was there was spying on them for money from the priests of that time. And Saul had scales of serpents over serpent scales over his eyes and ears. So the serpent blinds those that don't receive the gospel. Okay, he blinds them. So Saul did it in ignorance, but he was still blinded for a time and was killing Christians. But God, in His grace and mercy, uh, shined His glorious light on him. He got saved. But there are those who purposefully. Um, they worship the thorns and briars and they put them up to try to block um, God from getting to his people. And he talks about this thorns. I will burn through the thorns and briars. He talks about that in the Old Testament. He says, you'll put thorns and briars um, between me and my people. I will burn right through them, he says. So, and thorns and, thistle, and thistles are, are known as their gods. Okay, so we know in Epistle of Jude, he talks about wandering stars. He talks about, in the scriptures, about these spirits from the pit. They had a king over them, the angel of the bottomless pit. So these smoke spirits come up out of the pit and come up onto the earth. These are gates of hell. These look like people, but they're devils. They will never believe that Jesus is the Christ. And their works, their deeds are very evil. God, so they're demons. They're not even really people. Even though, you know, Judas Iscariot, you know, he partook in the, God, the doctrines of Christ. He was there. He was eating with them. He was drinking with them. He was with them. But he fought against God's word in handing him over. Now, yeah. The scriptures say that um, we don't battle against flesh and blood, but against spiritual wickedness. So something was in Judas Iscariot, or he was a devil. I don't know how exactly how that works, but we know there's tares amongst the wheat, right? That Satan had come in while men slept and sowed the wicked ones, tares, in the wheat, with the wheat. And so God waits till the end to gather to to gather it up and then burn or he says he binds them and then he burns them so the binding we bring down strongholds and everything that exalts itself above god and all that is worship because we worship our god and him only will we serve so we have to bind up everything else and also in other brothers and sisters you know everything else that's coming against the knowledge of god people who are lost sheep maybe maybe there's a person out there that's a lost sheep we give them the gospel we let the power of god do the work in them to bring them to faith and god will do it but those things that are thorns and briars and those fiery darts of the wicked which are jen or demon spirits you can't see they're they're putting fiery things pricks in your eyes or whatever we have a shield of faith to block the fiery darts of the wicked but that's who he's talking about these are spiritual wickedness they're nigh into burning and the smoke that comes up from the pit right smoke come where there's smoke there's fire there's a lake of fire down there beloved so god's going to burn with his word through the fire to get to us hallelujah praise the lord because we know that um there's a day the day of the Lord, a day that is smoke and burning, and it's going to be a, a terrible day. We, we don't hope this on the, our worst enemy. That's why we bless our enemies, those that are lost, that they would be found. Uh, many of them have set themselves up as our enemies, um, but soon they're going to be crying out for God's mercy and grace. Um, they may be a lost sheep. I don't know. God knows, <laughs> okay? But we know there's spirits of wickedness in the world. And many of them pretend to be mankind. Um, but we know that there are those that are spirits, evil spirits, demons, um, children of the devil, uh, the devil and his angels, okay, which rebel against the living God. So um, with that, I just wanted to bless you with this chapter 6 of Hebrews continued on. And it says, we receiving a blessing from God, but the thorns and briars is rejected and will be burned. So, <sighs> what wonderful news for us, a blessing. For God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love, which ye have showed toward his name, and that ye have ministered to the, sta the saints and do minister. So, he's talking to his them to remain in the doctrines of Christ in, in the name and full assurance of our hope, 
unto the end. So we see in verse 11, and we desire that every one of you do show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope unto the end, that ye be not slothful, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. For who God made promise to Abraham because he could swear by no greater, he swear by himself. So he sent himself, he sent his son, you know, the word of God um, to do the work so, so that he could bless us. So saying, surely blessing, I will bless thee and multiplying, I will multiply thee. Beloved, we have blessings multiplied from God. God is a faithful and true witness, so we can accept and receive his blessings and know that he loves us enough to come and get us. And that it's his work, his strange work, it says in the scriptures. So we give him all the praise, honor, and glory because this is God's word and he, get, he deserves the glory. All right, beloved, look up. Our redemption draweth nigh and agape love to you.